Welcome to the card court of the Magic Palace. And your name is? Margaret Haas. Margaret, nice to have you here, Margaret. And sir, your name is? Dennis Delorme. Dennis. Dennis and Margaret, hey, how are you? Nice to see you here. You know, quite often at the card corner, people come up to me afterwards and say, Martin, what is the easiest way of finding a card? You know, somebody selects a card. Margaret, I am now going to show you the easiest way I know of finding a card, okay? okay. Say yes. Yes. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> Margaret, what I'm going to do is I'm going to riffle through the deck something like this, and as I do any time you want, you say stop. When you say stop, remember the card you see. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. A <laughs> little bit late, Margaret, just a little bit late. We'll try it again, this time on the count of three. One, two, three. Stop. No, dear, you must do it while I'm going through the deck. We'll try it just one more time. Stop. Right. <laughs> Margaret, I haven't even started. Okay, here we go. Right there, would you remember that card? Mm -hmm. And I'd like a few people at the card corner to see it also. Sir, did you get to see it? Almost. Don't worry, you will in a minute. Yes. You know, there's many, many ways in which we shuffle a deck of cards, Mario. I'm going to show you one of my favorites. It's very simple, the idea. All you do is take one half of the deck, face up. You take the other half, face down. Then, Margaret, all you have to do is just shuffle one half into the other. You see, the idea isn't to be neat. It's just to mix them up a bit. And, Margaret, this mixes them up pretty good. By the way, we have a technical term for this. Do you know what it's called? No. It's called a mess. Oh. <laughs> yes. No, you see, the reason is, Marty, is we have some cards that are face down, some are face up, face to face, back to back. You know, I hate myself every time I do this. By the way, dear, what is the name of the card you're thinking of? Am I supposed to tell Please? you? Please. Seven of spades. Seven of spades? You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you it was the easy way of finding your card. I know what it is uh, now. I'm sure you do. I told <laughs> you. don't like it. You're, now, dear, you're not kidding me. You're really thinking of the seven of spades? I am so glad you're thinking of the Seven of Spades. I really am. And do you know why? You see, the Seven of Spades is the only card in the entire deck that wouldn't turn itself <laughs> face down. Am I going too fast for you? No, it's just that you're watching a little slowly. Yes. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, at the card corner, I'm going to give you a demonstration of cheating at cards I've done for police departments, law enforcement agencies, and audiences such as yourself all over the world. Now, I realize that not everybody here at the card corner understands all the various games of bridge, whist, poker, gin, rummy, snap, or crazy eights. And for that reason, if I do nothing except deal perfect hands in all of these games, not everybody would understand it. But everybody does understand, of course, the color of red and black. So I'm going to ask you to examine this deck of cards. And as you do, I want you particularly to note that there is no large group or block of cards together as far as color is concerned. In other words, sir, it's just a random shuffled deck of cards, right? Mm -hmm. And you said your name was? Dennis. Dennis, I'm glad you remembered. <laughs> well, I have to check, Dennis. Dennis, as you can see, it's just a random shuffled deck. Would you please cut one half of the deck over to here? And now, Dennis, would you complete the cut? And now, ladies and gentlemen, a deck of 52 pieces of paper become a living thing in the hand of a cheat. For although I do nothing, I am told at times I do it rather well. First of all, I'm going to attempt to deal the cards alternately, first red and then black. Well, I'm halfway there. From an examined, shuffled, cut deck of cards, dealing cards alternately, red and black. As I do this, please remember, it could be bridge, whist, poker, gin, rummy, snap, or crazy eights. If I take the cards, which are now alternating in color, and apparently do nothing, the cards now will no longer alternate, but become pairs of color. A red and a red, a black and a black. A red and a red, a black and a black. If I take the cards which are now in pairs of color and once again do nothing, they are no longer in pairs, but go back to the original condition of alternating red and black. So as you can see, a shuffled, examined, and cut deck of cards in my hands can either alternate red and black or can become pairs of color. But now I'll attempt to do an even more difficult thing by making the cards become triplicate. A black, a black, and a black, a red, a red, and a red. And so it goes. And now I'm going to attempt to do one of the most difficult things that I know how with 52 playing cards. But I will now shuffle a deck and then attempt to deal the cards as asked for by people in the card corner of the Magic Palace. Ness, what would you like to see? Singles, doubles, 
or triples? Doubles. Doubles. That would be a black and a black, a red and a red. And, sir, what would you like? Triple. Triple, a hard one. Black, a black and a black, a red, a red and a red. Dear, what would you like? Singles. Singles, of course, would alternate. Sir, what would you like? Fours. <laughs> Fours. <laughs> we know this is one in every crowd, right? <laughs> Sir, let me explain something, if I may. Anybody in the world can get one. Now, you might not know if it's red or black, but you can get one. Very few can get two, and as far as I know, I'm the only one to get three. But, my friend, nobody could get four. However, if you do three and one, you could get four, but then that's the only way it would work. And, of course, you may alternate them as you wish. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I have been dealing and shuffling the cards, I have admittedly been cheating. Now, if you speak to any professional gambler anywhere in the world, if you had the chance or the opportunity, perhaps you could ask him a question, and it might be this. What would be one of the most difficult things you could ever learn to do with an ordinary pack of cards? And quite possibly, he would tell you, it would be to stock the deck. In other words, to place just three cards in such a position that on the deal they come to himself. Because he knows if he can get any three of a kind, he'll win over 70% of all the hands he sits down to play. Now, as I have been dealing and shuffling, I have admittedly been cheating. But as you've watched me, I've now attempted not to stock three cards, but half a deck. Sir, you examined the deck before I started, and it looked very similar to what I have here. It was a random shuffled deck. As I specifically point out, there was no large group or block of cards together as far as color is concerned. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now, folks, if I've done it correctly, the cards are no longer single, no longer double, and certainly no longer triple. But what I've now attempted to do is, as you're watching me, completely segregate each and every red card from each and every black one. So the next time you sit down to play that friendly little game of poker, look very carefully at the gentleman just across the table. I'm sure you all know the one I mean, the one with the dark glasses, because who knows, it could be me. <laughs> Thank you very kindly, and uh, hope to see you next week at the card corner of the Magic Palace. Thank you for coming up here tonight. Oh, Thank you very kindly, sir. <laughs> See you again.